welcome to this webcast lecture on the revolution of 1830 in France in this series on the politics of the 19th century. We've already discussed the Congress of Vienna and the effect of the Holy Alliance of reactionary powers throughout the continent as a whole, including the reign of Wellington and Castlereagh during the decades of reaction, as they were known, reaction and repression uh, in the first two decades of the 19th century in England. In this webcast lecture, I want to concentrate more carefully on what happened in France. After the defeat of Napoleon, the victorious powers, the reactionary Holy Alliance of Russia, Prussia and Austria, together with their allies, the English and some smaller countries, Holland, Denmark and so on, had reimposed a monarchy on France. They'd re-established the Bourbon dynasty constitutional monarchy where the monarch has executive power but uh, the monarch must be answerable to parliament. That said the new National Assembly um, that was part of the restoration constitution in France was in no way democratic. The uh, franchise, the vote, was highly restrictive. It's more restrictive in some ways than the British Parliament at that time uh, which uh, was uh, very, very undemocratic as well until the Reform Act of 1832 began to allow even the middle classes to vote. Supreme executive power in France was invested in the monarch, and only the monarch could propose laws. Uh, at the same time, the Roman Catholic Church, which had been disestablished during the Revolution, uh, was reinstated as the state religion. It was given a role in education and in the universities, such as there was education at that time. Uh, religious censorship uh, was in, introduced into France and the, the priests, the local priests and the whole kind of hierarchy and bureaucracy of the Catholic Church in France was paid for by the state and aspects of canon law, church law, received the blessing of French uh, legal common law. The model was a reactionary, conservative, constitutional democracy in which the church would play a large role and in which the French state would take its place within the Congress of Vienna system, the Congress system as it was known, within a new Europe of reactionary, religious, uh, un undemocratic and repressive states uh, led by the Holy Alliance, Russia, Prussia and uh, Austria, uh, and France playing a part in that role. Although the constitution was changed in this way, uh, after the defeat of Napoleon, many of the social changes and economic changes that had been brought in by the revolution stayed in place. So, by and large, the peasants uh, retained control of the land that they seized from the breakup of the big aristocratic estates. The French aristocracy, the landed aristocracy, the French, as it were, opposite number to people like Wellington in England, had been decimated by Madame Guillotine, and so land was far more widely spread in France than in England at that time. And this was to have a marked effect on the economic development of France through the 19th and 20th century. There were, there were large numbers of small and medium-sized peasants who owned their own farms, uh, which that they had gained during the uh, revolution of uh, 17, the 1780s, 1790s, and they were to retain that. There was no wholesale uh, return of these lands to the aristocracy, Likewise, the Napoleonic reform of the old state, the old monarchical state, uh, stayed in place. Um, the, the new Bourbon monarchy was less grandiose than uh, it had been before the revolution. There was no Versailles culture anymore, no building of huge uh, palaces, no Marie Antoinette sort of scene. Um, so it is a more economical sort of monarchy, uh, the reform of the state, bureaucracy, and the judicial system that had taken place during the revolution also stayed in place, uh, which, get, which, which effectively meant very, very centralised control of the whole of France 
by uh, the judiciary in Paris and by Department of State in Paris. So following the restoration in 1815, there were, there were subsequent revolutions, including the one in 1830 I'm going to talk about. But the basic shape of France as a country of peasants, of uh, well-to-do, relatively well-to-do small farms, uh, a highly populated countryside, very much in contrast to either uh, England on the one hand, which was through the 19th century to become a uh, depopulated countryside with virtually no peasants, no self-sufficient farmers, uh, industrialised farming. France was to maintain a kind of organic, local, small uh, farm culture, right up until, well, almost up to the, the present day, in fact. So France was a, a country of farmers, a rural country, a country of peasants. But um, it had this one uh, overbearing city, Paris, uh, and Paris's power over this country of peasants was a remarkable aspect of France throughout the 19th and 20th century. You have a powerful, centralised French bureaucracy ruling over, um, a ruling over uh, an overwhelmingly peasant country. And the difference between the culture of Paris, on the one hand, and the one or two industrial regions that were to develop in France, and the rest of the French countryside became very, very remarkable, uh, and is still is to, to some extent. In the context of the Revolution of 1830, which this webcast is about, and the Revolution of 1848, which uh, we're going to come on to discuss, you see that Paris is a very radical, revolutionary sort of place, uh, but the French countryside, in the main, very conservative. Essentially, what's happened here is in the revolution of the 1780s and 1790s, the thing we call the French Revolution, uh, the peasants had got their farms, um, and that's really all they wanted. They didn't want to go any further with the revolution, um, and they were quite happy, as far as they were concerned. Uh, Hegel's, uh, you know, kingdom of God on earth had arrived when they got hold of the family farm. Uh, expropriating it from the aristocrats. They had no real interest in any further radical change, no sympathy with the growing urban poor. Uh, uh, processes in France were underway similar to those in England, perhaps not quite so dramatic uh, as with people gathering in to the industrial towns. But, but because uh, the distress of the rural population wasn't so extreme in France because many people could still make a living in the countryside, thus the pool of labour available in the cities to develop French industry was correspondingly small. So French economic development through the 19th, through the 19th century is much slower than uh, England. For most of uh, history, France had been streets ahead in terms of its prosperity, its... Uh, technological innovation, its sheer economic power. Um, the end of that French domination really comes with the Napoleonic War and the victory of uh, Wellington at Waterloo. Uh, and by 1850, France has fallen well behind on almost every indicator. With those remarks, we've come to the end of part one of this series of videos about the French Revolution of 1830.